The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar in and out of the cigar industry. It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, December 28th, 2019, live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe for the last time. We're going to have a new studio sponsor coming up next week, but in the meantime, we are going to announce the 2019 Cigar of the Year as we wrap up 2019 all together. The last show for the last year of the last decade, or is that true? Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its 10th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time. Or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Last show of the decade. Last show of the year, decade, well, week. Well... We had, we had that argument, I believe, last week that I said this may not be the, la- the, the end of the decade. It is. And we decided we it is, and Jonathan changed my mind, and then he came in the next day, and he changed his mind. Well, after doing some research, <laughs> apparently this Gregorian calendar that we use was started many years after the line was drawn in the sand of the Anno Dominant. Not BC before Christ, Anno Dominant, the year of our Lord. So they just went back and said, okay, that was year one. And they should have said that was year zero. And then year one would have happened the start of the second year. But, but the calendar is the calendar we use. Yeah, it's for- so you're saying we don't go by that calendar? We do go by that calendar. There is just no year zero. There really isn't. So yeah. I, I may have changed my mind back. It's the 80s. It's the 90s. It's the 10s. It's the uh, roaring 20s. I, I don't disagree with you of, of how we you look at it. You agree with me 100% is what I you're trying to say. I don't ever agree with you 100%. I don't know why I ever said that. I was. I agree said, 100% with Barry. <laughs> I don't. So anyways. Is this the end of the decade? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is this the last whatever. show of the decade? Yes. It's the last show of, of, I mean, any show is the last show of the decade. It depends on when you're counting from. It's so crazy. Anyway, let's <laughs> smoke something really nice this week. What are we going to smoke, Barry? Well, today's first cigar is the brand that won the 2012 Cigar of the Year, and it's Atabe, manufactured in Costa Rica by Selected Tobacco. The size that we're lighting up is the 4x55 Idolos, and it features a top-secret blend. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single cigar will set you back $21, while a box of 25 is $524.99. If you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. This is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Yeah, you lost your mind in December. <laughs> for just the people that are on the prime. No, this was you did this for everybody. Everybody. What the hell? <laughs> How are we supposed to make any money if you keep doing this? We're here to, we're here to make friends. That's what it's going to be for now on. We're not here to make money because it's, this is crazy. Yeah, you send the $21 for the people that were grandfathered in at nineteen ninety nine, or even the people that weren't grandfathered in at twenty four ninety nine. Once you factor the shop shipping, this paid for your whole care package. Yeah. So have you seen the three-pack that's out in those tubes? Zoom into there, Ed Sullivan. If you're watching this thing on youtube or facebook if you want to watch this thing this is the three pack take a tube out of there these tubes were not just made by tube manufacturers to make tubes for cigars they were made by cosmetic industry that actually put this tube together beautiful beautiful and i think this is the nicest one the small thick one just looks so nice it's very elegant and uh we had a hell of a Christmas season with the uh, Atabe tubes. They help bring up the registers, and uh, so the people in the care package can. Jonathan, when the ladies complain you're too small, you can say, "I'm not small. I'm elegant." Elegant. Is there a water <laughs> Who's the? Who are these ladies you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's me. I forgot the men. <laughs> okay, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices. Perdomo. 
cut out the federal less chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Hey, Dave. Yes. Cherries. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> wow, I nailed it. So there it is. So everybody has one of these now. So when I tell you the pre-light taste of the cigar, cut it and give a little taste to it. Cherries. And you can taste cherry. There's no cherries added to it. This has to do with the cedar aging that We happens. don't know that there's no cherries added to it because the blend is top secret. So we don't know. There could be cherries in it. I've actually never taken one of these cigars apart, but I know what he does. He does the sanding of this five types of cedar and then the, the lowering of the temperature and humidity and the rising of it back and forth for years and years and years where the cigar exhales and inhales and brings on these cedary tastes, different unique cedars than regular just Spanish cedar. This is five unique cedars that happen to it, and there you have what an Atabay tastes like, and this is my favorite cigar. Not size-wise. Size-wise, I'm, I'm on the Ritos right now. I'm a hardcore Ritos guy. See, I like the, the, the Lirios or the Brujos. I love it the It used spirit. to be until the Ritos came out. I know you Well, Brujos you was the best size, and then Ritos is exactly twice the grams of tobacco. It's the same exact taste as the Brujos. You just can smoke it longer. And I know you disagree with it, but I love the Spiritus. Yeah, it's, it's missing this type of flavor. The one that should have got a 97 rating? You know what, one? which one I had for Christmas? The baby Jesus. Yeah. Hachisos. <laughs> yeah. That he calls the God baby Jesus. God bless you. Which, yeah. is a, which is a little short one. Again, that's one I feel that it's is different. Is the missing. profile's different. Hey, Matt's here from the Ambitious Podcast. Wow, he's famous. He he's is. A, he's, a, he's a man bitch. Yeah. He's a man, it's man bitches. <laughs> We're going to light our cigar before Matt punches me in the face. <laughs> right. He's a, yes, he's a, he will. He's a black belt in karate, too. Uh, we're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Sputnik. The Vertigo Sputnik features a flip top, three jets, an easy adjustment wheel, and all three jets are fueled by the patented Vertigo big ass tank. The Vertigo Sputnik retails for $9.99. Pretty amazing. Yeah. $21 cigar with a $10 lighter. <laughs> Coincidence? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. So, would you say 55 ring gauge on this? 55. Four yeah. by 55. And oh, two years ago, if you would have asked me to smoke something more than a 50-52, I would have said, yeah. no. So, but, it's probably not a Sammy Hagar cigar then, because he can't smoke 55. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a wonderful cigar. And... There's a 1,000 people smoking this cigar right now. I'm so happy because there was a lot of people when this cigar first came out, when Atabe first came out six years ago, people said it's not worth it. But the people that said it's not worth it never smoked they it. They never smoked yeah. it. So it, it wasn't fair to end up saying it. Now smoke this and tell me this isn't in a different league than it everything certainly else. Is. This is the best. And I've had them all. Yeah, Atabe's the best, man. It's Crazy. When I first met you to start my uh, journey at Two Guys Cigars, yeah. you gave me one without a bed in your office. Okay. Life changing. Yeah. This cigar is above all else. Yeah. This is it. So, I, well, and I want to get into uh, later on the cigar of the century, but today we're talking about the cigar of the year. And, um, it, it's, you know, I, I've seen some people put down that it wasn't a good year for cigars. I disagree with that. I think cigars were fantastic once again. Uh, why, why? Because I think the uh, production has improved of how they make cigars. Um, the and more companies. The farming of what they're doing with tobacco has improved. More companies that, that are, were a little smaller maybe five, six years ago have really come into their own as far as their production and their quality and their consistency. And you've got that crop to shop mentality with some of them. And there's th those mid range companies are doing nothing but producing phenomenal cigars 
at a very reasonable price point. Yeah. What what was missing is probably the excitement of all the new releases and this and this and this because they truly can't be. We saw that with Avo Unexpected and, you know, yeah. what well, turns out to be something that else. They get people to focus more on the quality of their right. current products. So, I, you know, you, you start looking at um, the industry and saying, yeah, there didn't seem to be the buzz there was before. That's because there's not new cigar companies forming. There's not, uh, mm. you know, w what people are doing is switching companies and switching names and things like that is all, is all that's happening. But just so you know, a lot of the times when everybody was geeking out over this and saying, oh, look at the new thing by this guy and this guy, mm. that was something that existed also, by the way. You know, uh, it, it's like when we get a new employee here, we have to let them know we're going to pull the curtain back and yep. we're going to tell you the real deal here, uh, which we try to do on the show too. Unless, of course, the person that tells me tells me not to tell the real deal. Uh, make sure you say that. But um, here we go, getting into a new year, 2020, uh, next week, and we will have a new intro to the show. Wow, nice. Haven't done this in quite a while. So that's all been done and ready to go, and it's because we have a new sponsor. And the new sponsor um, is sponsoring the studio. So it won't be Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. While the show's going on, it will become a different sponsor, and mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it to that, and they'll figure it out uh, when next week so, happens. Say, same, Unless, of course, you have guesses. Would love same great look, different sponsor. Uh, same great look for now because we didn't get anything. We were promised some signage and things like that that didn't show up. I, I thought a certain person said they were bringing it here. Oh. Didn't you see that email? Okay. Maybe I made it up. I don't All right. know. And that was sometime in January. Barry, yeah, you want to have sure. a secret conversation where <laughs> no one knows what the hell we're talking about either? You okay. two don't have a thing in common. No. Jeez. Yeah, no, we don't. Okay. So anyway, how was uh, 2019 for everybody here? What happened? Um, positive things, negative things. How was your 2019? 2019 was pretty damn good. Yeah? It took me all year to learn how to do extended fast, but now I'm on board with it. I think you have anorexia. No. <laughs> I think you're right. something really going wrong with you. Did um, you you're underweight to begin with anyway. I'm not underweight. I walk around about eight pounds and heavy. You, and all you talk about is losing weight. Yeah, th That's there's all something you do. wrong with his brain. Does yeah. he go to the bathroom as soon as he's done eating the purge? Yes. He wants to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he takes things so that he goes to the bathroom more often. He doesn't eat for days. He hear him right. and he, and he's I ate rain. two apples. That's, I don't think that counts as taking things. To go to the bathroom. I think there's something wrong. I'm just telling you. But, I'm make the, that statement. For the record, those of you who haven't eaten apples in a while, one, that's all you need. Two was overkill. Yeah. I, he's so, he's the Karen Carpenter of this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, wow, a bunch of old people just we, laughed. I have no idea what that means. We've only just begun. <laughs> <laughs> we've only just begun. Uh but that's your whole thing. It's all about you, you lost a lot of weight and you feel good about pounds, it. Yeah. And, you, and, you, and you're down into the 180s or whatever. I'm uh, walking around in the low 190s. I'd like to get into the mid 80s. Want to lose even happy. more weight. Yeah. Yeah. So well, when he's There's down to 110, wrong. there'll be more space on stage for you and Barry. Hey, and, and this is what that. you look at as your accomplishment this year that you lost weight. In October, my you're somebody that was underweight to begin. My accomplishment was being able to get past my food addiction and get into extended fasting. Yeah. It's a psychological thing. Yeah, October, just be... so everybody knows. October. He doesn't know, but that's okay. <laughs> I want to share it with everybody else. There's something going on. I, I brought it to his attention, and he's denying it. But that's the first sign. At October, he'll be part of the decorations for Halloween. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You're just trying to be a good friend. Just so let him know. I'm going to yeah. lay off now, but all that's right. all. 2020. I said it, I, and I said it in front of everybody, but yep. I said it personally to him, too. I think there's a problem here. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, but that's okay. Yeah, me, I lost 62 pounds. I needed to lose it. Yes. I needed to lose another 62. I saw The Godfather for the first time. Ah. Talk about life changing. Yeah. And uh, it's been a good year with the exception of my car shit in the bed and currently having to share a vehicle with my wife, but uh, it's been a good year. All right. Good. You don't shit on him at all for losing weight? He needed to, <laughs> and we're all happy that he did that. Okay, we're all happy so for I it. See where we're and, and he eats every day. Someday you skip a couple of days in between. This I do. Is, the, is a problem. The big change for me is that I get 
bigger portions at lunchtime since Jonathan <laughs> stopped eating. <laughs> and even when he doesn't eat, he still feeds you. Oh, yeah. He makes wonderful things. That he doesn't do. And it's great. There's more of it. Yeah, now. keep calling me a dick. Go ahead. Just you don't keep, feed me. Keep You don't want to eat. I think go. this is why he's so angry lately. You're anorexic. Oh. I'm anore anorexia <laughs> reversa. <laughs> <laughs> I have that. <laughs> I can't stop eating. I have that going on. You lose any weight? No. No? Plan on if it's 2020? Nothing? People talk about that all the time. 2020. I'm, you know, the next year I'm going to, new year, going to get my shit together. I'm, I'm going to do the same old shit. Yeah? Yeah, it seems to be working. All it's right. not making me unhappy. Yeah. Do you accomplish anything this year you wanted to accomplish? <sighs> not particularly. No. I, I don't think I had anything on the list. No. No. You know? All right. Mostly I press buttons. I make shows happen. And All right. I smoke right. cigars. I plan to do that in 2020. All right. I lost 40 pounds. I wanted to do that. I'd wow, like everybody it. gets accolades for losing weight except <laughs> for the skinny guy. Nobody gave me the accolade. I needed to do it. And you did you good? Told, you told me I did, so I did, right? Yeah, you did it. Okay. When you gain 40 pounds, we'll give you the accolades. Yeah. That's not happening. Imagine if there was a contest to gain 40. Mm. Oh, my God. Big money at the end. <laughs> I could gain 100 if I needed to. If the money was right. Offer of the day. Offer Jonathan money to eat. Whoever gains 100 pounds first. How about that for a contest? <laughs> I don't know about God. that. You got to just live through it. I, I would have to live through it. I published a book. Yeah. Huh? You see the checks coming in. That's good. Huh? I do. You need to publish a tell-all book when you retire. Yeah. Really pull back the What's garden. fun is when Dave gets a check, we all end up getting some sort of present, and he calls it the book money present. Yeah, this is book money. This is we book money, it. so it doesn't even count. We went to Calhoun's with book money. Ah, yeah, we've uh, we've money. got lunch also. with book money before. I went green. You did? I went green. <laughs> huh? Green New Deal? Yeah. Rah, rah, rah. No, you didn't. I don't believe in that crap, but I, I bought an electric car. Your your geo footprint is bigger with your Tesla than it was with your Escalade. <laughs> yeah. Because of the plant that they smelt the nickel in. Nothing grows for two miles because of the acid rain. Whatever. It's cool. Why? <laughs> it is cool. Yeah. It is cool. You're kind of negative. Yeah. yeah he's going to, for 2020, he's going to get off that. Is he? He's going to yeah. be positive? Nope. 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 No. 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 I've decided for 2020, I'm going to say all the stuff that I'm thinking that I don't say. You're not old enough to do that yet. I think I got to do it. All right. And I went deaf in one ear right? <laughs> in 2019. More than that you went deaf, there's a persistent ringing, which makes you very cranky. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> crazy. That was a big time. Tinnitus or tenonus, they call Tinnitus, it. Tinnitus, yeah. That was a big positive change for me. You accepted that you're deaf in one ear, so I don't have to check your headset after every show. Right. We, we would, how long did that go on for? <laughs> no, nope, the right ear, it's I not. I replaced everything on that thing three times. <laughs> well, I, the right then, ear wasn't going. It was just, I wasn't picking up anything. And I swapped every other headset in there, but it was always a problem. And when it first happened, I said, Dave, I, when I put the headset on, I hear fine. And he's like, nope, there's something wrong with the wire. Replace them all. And I'm <laughs> yeah. just like, do you, think, do you think maybe you could just go to the ear doctor and just have it looked at? I'm not doing it. it mm -hmm. Two years we had to deal with that. Yeah, so they determined I'm 80% deaf in the right ear, and I have tinnitus. Do I get an apology, by the way, for all the names that he called me? Wanted to be lazy because I don't want to change out the thing <laughs> three times when it, didn't, it was, wasn't broken? So anyway, I got to live with it. I got to live with what I have. So that was what happened to us personally, but let's talk about, because it's a cigar show, let's start incorporating some cigar mm -hmm. talk into this. What happened in the cigar world in 2019? Um, there was lots of layoffs on production, and uh, we talked about that during a show, that it was due to online sales dropping, um, not from them selling, but from them purchasing because of the acquisitions that happened, right? Cigars International bought Thompson Cigars. Um, See, I bought somebody. There was a lot going on, and they... they yeah, when you buy a warehouse filled with cigars, you don't need more cigars. Right. You have inventory They incorporated now. all. People lost their jobs. Um, it trickles all the way down to these third world countries where now they don't... They start laying off um, and shutting down factories, which is what happened. And then it goes all the way to the tobacco fields. We're not going to need any crops this year. So, you know, we don't want to buy any tobacco. Um, and... What ends up happening to it is a lot of people will think, oh, then the price is going to go down on the product. But quite the opposite happened. Prices go up 
because they need to make so much money. Supply and demand, in. right. So th that's one of the things that happened. Although we saw some manufacturers giving away product because they had too much product before they laid off the employees. So uh, I'm going to end up taking a, a trip down in January and February to go see uh, what's going on in the factories and report back to you what's happening if, if this is continuing or uh, has it leveled off. Acquisitions and distribution changes. Avanti Cigar Company Toscano ends their distribution agreement with Royal Agio Cigars. Um, that stopped. Um, Balmoral, Royal Agio, went to Scandinavian Tobacco, the ownership to it, which is, you, you're thinking not much Royal Agio in the premium cigar industry, but in the, on the domestic side, on the machine-made side, it's a giant um, acquisition that it's happened there. a big there. purchase. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Scandinavian Tobacco is the people from General Cigar, <clears throat> also the people from Cigars International and Thompson. It's all one company. Um, Regis. Regis Cigars um, is a small guy that um, was making uh, uh, cigars with Casada and distribution through there. They moved their, their manufacturing, and along with that, becomes the distribution. They're not going to distribute cigars. Um, so they move, um, and they um, go to, um, who they go to? Regis, you're talking about. Yeah. His own. He's handling oh, all right. himself. He, he ends up doing his own. So with that, um, the people from Casada who make Fonseca uh, actually sell the brand Fonseca, um, which is their strongest brand, I would say, um, to the ownership to My Father Cigars. That happened at the tail end of this year. Um, it's going to be interesting because there's an old Cuban brand name mm -hmm. that's going to uh, mean something to My Father Cigars, mm -hmm. and I think they're going to know exactly what to do to it. Cretech hires Mike Giannini, Cretech, uh, as general manager. He was uh, let go from General Cigar, and Cretech takes some. Cretech is Ventura Cigars. Right. So Mike Giannini goes there, and then um, Ventura buys Foundry Cigars from General Cigar. Mm -hmm. So it says, okay, now they got Foundry Cigars. They have their Ventura Cigars. So they end up hiring a bunch of people. They get people on the road. Isn't that uh, a foolish buy, though, because it doesn't, it's not pre-07? Correct. Correct. I, I thought, it would, you know, I don't know what they're doing with it, but it meant something to Mike Giannini. So he talked his way into that. Ventura Cigars becomes a standalone unit from Cretech, and then Cretech acquires Tobacconist Magazine, Pipe Tobacco, Cigars and Leisure Magazine, and Tobacco Review. So here's Cretech going crazy now, and then Cretech... Attempting to buy the media? Yep, they did. Then Cretech fires their entire sales force. In November. <laughs> yeah. We, we, so Christmas, all these things fired. happen, and then all of a sudden it's like Cretech... So I didn't see that coming. I actually met with them the, the day before right? with the national salespeople, and the next day they let go. So I'm scratching my head there. I don't know what happened and what's going on, but we'll see what, what the rationale was for that because it doesn't make any sense. Um, room 101 moves distribution to La Polina. That's a weird one. Weird. Um, moves distribution. Is he still having his cigars made in the same place? He bounces around, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, he's, he's not loyal to one factory. He has cigars, I believe, made in multiple locations. So, uh, uh, George Sosa, vice president of Alec Bradley for many, many years. He leaves to get into retail. Most people leave from retail and go into the distribution part of what it is. Here's George Sosa, vice president of Alec Bradley. He leaves, he gets into retail in, um, I believe, Sarasota, Florida area. He's a good guy for that. Good though. guy. Um, Lars Teton returns into the cigar industry and sells to Alec Bradley. That was an odd one, too. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of odd things this year. He's an odd one. Yep. Yes. Uh, others are waiting to be sold. Altria, the parent company of Philip Morris, Nat Sherman, for sale. No takers yet to be announced. Um they, that's going to be a tough one because of real estate. We got into that during mm -hmm. one of the shows, went pretty deep on that. Um, I'm not hearing any buzz at all. No, it's almost like 
it's not going to happen, maybe, and they'll just dissolve it. Uh, yeah, curious to see what happens. Like like Dunhill, maybe Dunhill mm-hmm. realized there's there's nothing there, and um, it just disappears. Uh, Imperial, which is Altadas, is for sale. Mm-hmm. No takers announced. Lots of playing going on there. Mm-hmm. Lots of stuff happening. Uh, can't report any of it, but lots of stuff going on. I understand that it has to be done within May of 2020. So we're only five months away from knowing who's going to be the buyer of that. That has a big part of the Cuban side, too, which is um, Habanos and who their partners and things are going to be there. Cigar aficionado, rumor is for sale. Uh did no you take- start that rumor two years ago? I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, still going on. No takers. Um, you saw, again, back to Cretec, that they bought lots of publications, which, you know, print, it's, it's a tough sell right now because everything's going digital. Um, and here, Cigar Aficionado, which is more valuable than all the rest combined, um, but no takers. Um, what else? Bans another problem. Instagram bans tobacco related paid ads. Yep. Remember when that ended up happening? Facebook and Instagram ban sales and giveaways of cigars. Same company. Uh, YouTube uh, demon- demonetizes cigar related channels. We we took a hit for that. Yep. I don't think I've ever got paid actually. No. I mean, at one time you had several dollars coming to you. Yeah, I don't think I ever got paid. I don't care anyway. There, there was a different method to the madness that was happening there. But it's funny. They run ads. It's not we. they can't run ads. They run ads. They just keep all the money. <laughs> right. So how, how fair was this? But anyway, uh, Disney banned smoking at all their parks. Not a surprise. A surprise that was actually going on. Bans of flavored cigars going around the country. That'll become a national thing, looks like. We'll talk... Um, about the 21 and thing that happened, but um, the age to increase nationally to smoke cigars, 21. It started took place December 20th. Immediately. Yeah, took place immediately. If you don't know, it already happened. We're going to talk about that deep into the after show, so uh, catch that on Wednesday. Uh, Congress would ban internet cigar and e-cigarette sales of flavored tobacco. So this was part of the under-21 thing that was going. It went as a separate unit. That doesn't mean it's all safe. It went as a separate unit just to get that through, so that ended up happening. And the FDA set the deadline for a substantial equivalence to May 12, 2020. It's going to be a big thing. That's when you're going to see a lot of cigar brands disappear at that point. We're going to have so much time to end up getting rid of it as brick-and-mortar retailers. They're going to have no time at all to sell it to us. Their sales thing is happening now, that we can buy that product now if they're not going to find a substantial equivalence. Retailers, be warned. You don't want to start buying a whole bunch of product that is not going through FDA because you're not going to be able to buy it again. You're going to have two years, I believe, to, to sell it off your shelves. Right, unless they change that and make it immediate. <laughs> Which <laughs> could happen, right? You see how the mm-hmm. FDA did that. They made a they, they broke the Constitution. They made an immediate thing that happened. And uh, the, the, the bad thing is nobody's going to fight against it. So uh, it happened. You got something to say? No, I just have a few things you might have missed, but All I'm, right. to see. I'm letting you finish your list first. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Cuba, the U.S. to allow lawsuits against foreign companies over uh, uh, the Cuban property. Um, so that happened. Um, that's going to be an issue when it comes to trademark law of Cuban products, when and if the embargo gets lifted. Trade restrictions from Cuba comes back. U.S. State Department uh, announced that you can't do it like I did before and and go. Um, IPCPR changes the PCA. The IPCPR, International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailers Association, changes to the Premium Cigar Association. Notice what's out is the retailer, um, and it becomes Premium Cigar. Mm -hmm. That's going to have a lot of effect in 2020. We'll see that happen. Mm -hmm. Villiga pulls out of the IPCPR even before it turns to PCA and lots to follow. Um, we touched on that, but that'll be a big thing in 2020. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear um, the dominoes start taking effect at that point. Uh, consumers to be welcome to the trade show. Shot themselves in the foot with that huge uproar, which led to a lot of manufacturers and retailers looking to pull out. 
and then becomes the back off of that. Oh, never mind. We were just kidding. We'll mm-hmm. wait till next year to do that. Mm-hmm. And that will wait till next year determine my thing of, okay, I'm going to back off. I'll wait till next year too. Yeah. Uh, other stuff of note, um, Jose Blanco left EPC and has not returned yet to the cigar industry. Scratching my head there. Um, pissed off Christoph Firecracker was launched and sold out. Perdomo 20th anniversary Firecracker is set for June 2020. Atabay Cigars gets the new footband because of counterfeits, fakes that were happening in California, um, which, uh, from my understanding, has gone away since that. You'll see two bands on the cigars. Depending on the size. Yeah. Like the, the Idolos doesn't have the secondary the, band right now. Yeah. Wait, thanks for announcing that to all the counterfeiters so they know which size to <laughs> well, go after, want, parents. I don't want people to they think will. they got a fake. Yeah. So uh, this is not Fugazi. There we go. No Fugazi. <laughs> Anything, Jonathan? Fugazi? No. No. The American by J.C. Newman, rolled in Tampa, brings handmaids back to their factory. Uh, it's up and, running, r- up and running. These are hard to get cigars, so look for them. Give them a try. Um, they're good. United Cigar uh, Group adds El Talio, the first ever cigar with stems as the filler. We'll see if that catches on. At, uh, also, you're going to help me with this name, Jazz Sam Cruel. Jazz Sam Cruel. Crown Crow. He has uh, a cigar coming out next year called Fuck the FDA. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure that'll get substantial equivalence <laughs> just yeah. on its namesake. Yeah, he's going to release it at TPE 2020. Really? Yeah, limited, <laughs> limited amount. Well, he was at I've already the spoken to IPCPR about or that. PCA this year, um, and he was the only one not allowed to bring his Nugs cigar into the show. And he's going next year after they pushed him out at the last second. And then he's showing up again with a cigar that they're not going to allow, probably, because they're going to say this is not PC or who the hell knows hey, what's going to happen. Free advertising for him. Um, but his first uh, line of infused CBD cigars uh, comes out. These are milestones of things that, are, that, are, that happened last year. And Davidoff announced the Avo Unexpected that was actually a regular production cigar. All these things... We're part of 2019. Barry's got some more. What do you got, Barry? Yeah, so in March, Dylan Austin was named the president of Davidoff of Americas. In June, Nicholas Perdomo Trey was named the national director of sales. And uh, August was the return of the second edition of Mikaida Firecracker. And it looks like a, a dirty, uh, dirty Fabian Ziegler left Drew Estate. Mm, that was and uh, those are the things of note yeah. that... You might have missed. Yeah. Dave, from uh, Facebook, Victor Madrano says that in 2020, Mr. J needs to work on his anger issues. He does. It's not happening. I'm going to get more angry in 2020. I'm the, just telling you what the See where he is. immediately goes? He immediately yeah. goes into anger and goes fight the guy. Yeah. See, that if, you, if you had a big breakfast just, this morning, you would have been fine. You'd be less <laughs> angry. I haven't eaten breakfast in... <laughs> Two years. That's it. You're missing. Remember, your we breakfast used to go to pizza. breakfast pizza. Yeah, we used to, it was a good time, and you were happy. You came to work happy. You had breakfast <laughs> pizza, <laughs> and and we'd talk about it. Ed Sullivan was there sometimes. Oh, it was. Uh, those was, were nice. Those times. were the good old days yeah. when Jonathan used to eat, and he <laughs> yeah. wasn't anorexic. Man, that's it. it. Now is I'm it losing because twenty you, pounds. Is it because you see this we go again? <laughs> but you be you're in between two fat people and you don't ever want to be like this is part of it. You know, is this part of it like looking in the mirror and you go, Oh my god, I do know. You, but part it's me of it, next to you. It's not you looking at me. Do your co host disgust you is what they say. Yeah, mm. Ed Sullivan, I, I can say it to you because you you can relate to this. Never in my life have David or Barry come into my mind when I make a decision about my personal life. That they both sense. they both would true. like to think that they true. are that valuable to it's me, but so they're not. not true. It's so they're not. not true. He I make wants- my decisions based on what I think is best for me, and no. I think best for me is going to be 185. That's where I'll stop. Will you? He's yes. Gonna, he's going to quit DJing, too. <laughs> <laughs> and every weekend he goes, I got to go this DJing why, again. He stopped for two years. This is why I'm so angry. It so, is. So early thoughts here on Atabay Idols? All right. Idols? Idolos. Idolos, which means, means idols. idols. It's idolos is how it's pronounced. But the uh, you guys have had the, the atomic fireballs, right? 
I need a little leeway on this. Wow, you're going to have to have a lot. All yeah. right. He always goes to balls, but go on. So you you got to suck that atomic fireball down until it's no longer red. It's pink, and a lot of the cinnamon is dissipated. It's still there, but it's not stinging the palate. So this is a little bit of sweet and very, very mild cinnamon on the on the finish. There's hints of cinnamon. I yeah, get it. you know what? There, 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 <laughs> is, hints. there is some cinnamon. Screw you, That Sullivan. was a good thing for me for 2019. I learned how to say cinnamon. Sometimes I can say it. Sometimes I can't. <laughs> can help. <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely some cinnamon. I love these cigars. Mm-hmm. We know. This is, this, is, this is my bomb right here. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, when we come back, 2019 Cigar of the Year, the past, the present, and the future. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe for the last time. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Series is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper, considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez. Full flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper. Rich in bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice. And available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum. Competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper, fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Christoph cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Christoph is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. 
with over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor is smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. This is Nelson Lafronso from Selected Tobacco, the company who made and manufactured Atabe, Pyro, and Bandolero. You are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. There we go, and that's what we're smoking, the Atabe Idolos. 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 Uh, as we announced today, the real winner of the 2019 Cigar of the Year. Shout out to the- uh, Nick Perdomo, who's listening to hey, the show. Hey, hey. I'll see Nick Perdomo real soon. So uh, the competition, uh, we, we bring it down every year down to the contenders. So we let everybody know way in advance who the people are up for it. And then we start the debate. The debate happens with not only us at the stores doing it, but we look at the sales of the product. Then we actually ask the people who get the contenders pack for their votes. Um, it, it, it got a little better at the very tail end. We got we got some more votes in, but I thought it was a little weak this this year of uh, people voting. So you're leaving it up to us for the for the biggest part of it, I would say. But uh, who are the contenders, Barry? Well, in alphabetical order, we had Aladino, Connecticut, which debuted in April of 2019. You had the back to back Nicaragua, which debuted in November of 2018. You had the Guardian of the Farm Night Watch, which debuted in September of 2019. Henry Clay Warhawk, April 2019. HVC Serie A in July. Christoph Shade Grown, also in July. And Nesta Miranda Special Selection in May. Okay. So uh, a lot of them came out at the trade show, and they were able to ship right away to give us enough time. Stuff that comes to us in October or something, there's no time uh, for us to uh, pick those details. And those products can possibly come in next year for Cigar of the Year because it, you know, we got to put draw a line in the sand, basically, um, and that's what we do. So those are the contenders. Um, I'm going to uh, pass Cigars of the Year, and as I say, we've been doing this since 1992, and, it, and it's funny, the first Cigar of the Year ever was Fonseca Triangulari, 1992. Mm. Um, what a cigar that was way back in the day. Uh, it was very popular. Mm-hmm. It was a mild cigar. It still remains a mild cigar. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to change. I think um, the folks at my father, when they get a hold of that, is going to turn that into a different cigar. That had the tissue paper in yes, case of emergencies, right? <laughs> for what? Blowing your nose? Whatever you need yeah. it for. Uh, Look at you with a little bathroom humor over there, there Ed go. Sullivan. Mm-hmm. So proud of you. 1993, Romeo and Juliet Vintage. So that was one of the first vintage cigars Mm -hmm. to come out that somebody would say this is a vintage year crop of whatever that was. 
1994, a lot of people aren't going to remember. I think Ed's going to remember the stove, Butera. Oh, yeah. yeah I remember Butera. And, uh, they always tasted buttery. I don't know yeah. if it was just because it was called Butera. It was creamy, delicious. What a Very great cigar. Good cigar. Uh, he was a pipe cigar, pipe maker, got into the cigar business because the boom had happened. And um, he later sold his brand off to Altadas, and it disappeared, and that was the end of it. It's funny. Some companies buy things and then kill them. Yeah, they buy them and kill them. Um, Felipe Gregorio, those that remember Felipe Gregorio, still in the cigar business, mm. 1995. Um, I believe that cigar was made at the time by the people from Camacho, before there was even a Camacho. It, it was different at that time. Yeah. It had a little more pop to it than yeah. a lot of the stuff on the market. Which would be, which would be actually Aladino today. I remember when that cigar came out, like we were talking about how this has cherry notes. Yeah. That had a definitive cookie dough note on the cold draw. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember it that far back, 1995. <laughs> 96, Puros Indios. Puros Indios was the bomb in those days. That was a full-body cigar. Couldn't get enough of it. Yeah, them. it was really hot. Um, 1997, La Flor Dominicana, and that's when La Flor mm. Dominicana made mild cigars, the Alcalde. Yep. Um, great cigar. 1998, and I, I think you're listening to the show right now, is La Tradition Perdomo Reserve X. The best torpedo ever made, still to this day, mm -hmm. his torpedoes. N you can you poke your eye out with those things. <laughs> you cannot blind show somebody, a, a, take a band right. off and show me a, a Perdomo <laughs> torpedo, and you don't know that that's a torpedo. They use scissors to make sure that it's lined up. The drawer is perfect. It's the most unbelievable torpedo ever made is any torpedo from Perdomo. If you smoke Perdomo cigars, try one of the torpedoes because- Worth you know, it. Yeah. The best. 1999, Indian Tobacco. Mm. Phil Zangi, Rocky Patel as a team in 1999. Did you know Phil back then? Nope. No nope. Kidding. Rocky was the guy in front. Phil was in the background and didn't even know him. Um, 2000, CAO Cameroon. And there's a little nod to Perdomo again. That's when Perdomo started making the CAO Cameroon. Never been the same. Um, that was switched over from factory to factory to factory. Cameroon ain't what it used to be anyway, right. but wow, what a cigar. And the good news is I still have a box of them. No kidding. Yeah, <laughs> in, in my humidor. Quit full, messing around. Full Let's sale break box. those things out. We got a 2020, right? It's been 20 years. Yeah. I have a 20-year-old box in the humidor. Um, 2020, uh, 2001, Cusano Corojo. Mike Cusano, I don't know if he's listening to the show, but Mike Cusano, who later sold off to Davidoff, Cusano was a hot commodity in 2001. Talk about a bang for your buck. And they produce millions of cigars. So far, the only company that really is in existence as a company is... LFD. Oh, you got LFD and Perdomo. Okay. Yeah, and They're CAO still exists. It's not a, its own company, though. Yeah. True. 2002, Camacho Diploma. Oh, good one. Come on, you look at these this lineup of cigars that were the best cigars of the year, right? Mm -hmm. Camacho Diploma is currently Aladino. Corojo Reserve yep. in the Robusto yep. size. If you smoke the Corojo Reserve, that's pretty damn close to with that Camacho. Yeah. I'm up to seven boxes in my humidor, untouched. So, so here's one that you can't undo things, right? <laughs> 2003, Gurkha, MS Double Corona. Um Gurkha was coming out strong. They had they had come out with pre-embargo Cuban cigars. That's how they right. start, started out. And then comes out a regular line, uh, the MS. I don't know what that meant. Uh, Master, uh, Master Selection, selection maybe. Yeah, yeah. Master Selection? Okay. Um, and the packaging was beautiful. The cigar burned well. Everything was really good mm -hmm. about it. And he was off and running. Mm -hmm. And then later hoarded out, made millions of different types of things and got lost in the shuffle but there it was 2004 rocky patel 1990 rocky patel comes out with his own brand 2004 and there it is it shows up and still to this day it's still got legs 2005 maybe i got the brand wrong but i certainly got the company correct was cabawan yep. mm -hmm. two two brands came out that year from the same maker and it was cabawan and tatuaje mm -hmm. And Cabawan was better well, to that's my the taste one you, profile. That's the one you could say yeah. anyways. Yeah, maybe. And milder, too. Yeah. Um, and it was uh, a trophy went out to uh, 
Papin Garcia and Pete Johnson, and there they were off and running. That was 2005. 2006, here's a brand that doesn't exist anymore, Chateau Real. But Chateau Real, I could make the argument, is Sober Mesa Brulee, kind of. Kind of. Um, one is uh, slightly sweetened, and the other one was not. <laughs> There's no proof uh -huh. of that. Except if you put it in your mouth. <laughs> Uh, another cigar brand that disappeared. Now we got a lot of them that came and went, right? <clears throat> 2007, Cuvée Blanc. Cuvée was the high-end cigar from Davidoff made, uh, no, it was actually from, from Cusano, Cusano, made in a different factory at that point. This but is where the rumor started that uh, you owned Cusano. Yeah. But that might have started way back, whatever. <laughs> I, I got none of the money, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, that was 2007, uh, Beautiful cigar, my God, and come and went as fast as it was gone because at that point, Davidoff bought them and did what you see happens here, that they just disregard it. I don't know why they buy things and disregard it because great cigar, and um, there's somebody I know that says they got a whole box of them, a uh, whole box of the Solomons, which mm. were boxes of 50. I can't remember who it was, but it's time to break that open because that was 2007. 2008, another cigar come and gone. It was Essencia. Essencia was made by the people from Palio Cutter. This was, so the Essencia was my exact flavor profile even now. It was a little bit on the stronger side. It had that cedary taste. In the 08s only, when they switched to the 09s, it was a different cigar. The, the cigar actually had the date on it, and it hasn't been a cigar like that since. I wish I still had some. Uh, Butera, I mean Bahia. Ended up doing that back mm -hmm. in the day. Dunhill did it in, in those days, and Essencia did it. The 08 was fantastic. And then the 09 it, was, yeah. it, it was okay. It just wasn't worth yeah. it. Yeah. Dave, was it Edgar that told you he had a box of those? Maybe. I think it was. Maybe, really. Okay. <laughs> we better check with him. Yeah, he, doesn't give a, he doesn't give any of that stuff. <laughs> I want to let you know right now, the chat room is having this whole debate about what parts of the cigar we are. And people are saying Jonathan is the Connecticut shade because if it's just a little bit off, it's bitter. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hopefully you're watching right now, because I don't want the podcast <laughs> listeners who are chiming in to see this. 2009, it became value at that point. Remember, the economy crashed. Cigars went up in price. It was hard selling cigars in 2009. Uh, Brickhouse Toro ends up coming out, and what a bang for the buck that cigar yeah. was. Five bucks. Five bucks and a comfortable chair, right? They're not five dollars anymore, but... In, the, in, the, in, the, in 2009, that was an unbelievable cigar for that price. Uh, 2010, Jesus Fuego, 22 degrees north, 83 degrees west. Still in my regular rotation. Yeah. Exceptional. Great cigar. Um, another cigar that came and went, but you may see a, a re-release of this. 2011, Victor Vitale and the Cigar Agency comes out with Ortsak. Which was and, Castro spelled backwards. Correct. And at the end of... Their reign, um, they sold all their stuff to me with the agreement of the names and everything. So I have that brand, and you may see that come out next year, uh, 2020. Um, 2012, Atabay. Atabay comes out, Cigar of the Year. Wasn't even close for me. Uh, yes, there was a lot of people that said, I'm not even going to buy one of those no, cigars. No, that because... cigar sold out three times during that thing. In fact, it almost couldn't win because it was. It looked like it was bordering on, could they supply us with enough cigars? Yeah. Uh, 2013, Trademark Toro. That was Hammer and Sickle. Another cigar made by Davidoff. Um, and it was a great value. And um, um, the late, great Eric Hansen. Um, 2014, a brand that came and left, another one, is B.G. Meyer. A lot of Davidoff made stuff yep. shows up in the list yep. here. They make great <clears throat> cigars, um, and they make cigars for other people, and then something goes terribly wrong. They buy the company, or the company ends up leaving them. Uh, you saw that in Room 101. You see that in a lot of different stuff. A few exceptions, but you can notice how the cigars have gradually gotten a little bit stronger as the years mm. have gone on. Okay, let's let's see if that ends up happening. Uh, 2015, Recluse Amadeus. Uh, Reserva Habano. Yeah, Habano. Uh, Recluse, still to this day, great cigar, yep. box-pressed. Maybe the only box-pressed here in this group? Uh, no, Rocky, Rocky Patel. Patel. Rocky Patel. Uh, 2016, La Galera, Connecticut. 
La Galera, not a full-body cigar, still mild a beast. with not, flavor. Yep, it still sells like crazy. Yeah, big, big seller. Um, 2017 Aladino. Still a big seller. Big. I, I was just looking at the numbers Huge. getting towards the end of the year and saying, holy God, right up there at, at the top. Um, 2018 was Aganosa Leaf, Connecticut. That's the cigar of the year right now. Also box One, pressed. Yep. Yeah, another box pressed. So there we have what um, the past cigars of the year is. That ding ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? Who would win in a fight between, and this is in their primes, Bruce Lee versus Mike Tyson? In an MMA match, MMA match, making you. Yeah, I got to give that to Bruce Lee. It's going to take him a long time, but he's got patience. No, no, it's Mike Tyson. He's an absolute animal. So they boxer were, versus MMA fighter. You say boxer. It doesn't matter because Bruce Lee was only 135 pounds, and Mike Tyson in his prime was 220. He could. He could punch. We should ask an expert. Yeah, he could punch and move. Well, I just want to hear three Bruce Lees with before, just one jab. Before I ask the real you answer, land that and jab. he's going to have it. What What do you think, Ed? Who, who's going to win? Bruce that? Lee. Bruce Lee. Yeah, I think Bruce Lee too. You know, he did that Wing Chun style of fighting, which was defensive. I think he would be Wang able Chung. to... Wang Chung. Wasn't that an 80s song? <laughs> Wing Chung. We're going to Wang Chung tonight. Actually, yeah. there's a great movie, if you could deal with a movie with subtitles called IP Man or Ip Man, yep. which is the guy that really developed the style, and it's a defensive style, and I think he'd be able to defend against Tyson yeah. and win. Barry, I think I watched, there were three of them. Yeah, the first two were, were really good. Yeah, the third The one, third was, ooh. yeah. There's no place for him to go. It's an octagon. He can't run that far. It's over. In his prime, Tyson? No way. All right, let's get the answer. What is it, Gary Marino? Who wins it? Mike Tyson? It's Tyson. No. Tyson. I, I don't think he gets hurt. He's a barista. I, His opinion. I want to ask uh, Matt Babemine. He, he. Oh my God. Yeah, Matt. In his because wow. we're talking about both of them in their primes. All right, I can't argue with that. We got we got an MMA okay. guy and a and a karate guy out there that that's going against the karate guy. Yeah. Wow. Because you're talking about in his prime. It's not like Tyson couldn't take a hit from but a 135 pound guy. Bruce Lee that could do a punch, five inch punch or something like that. And go one inch punch. One inch punch. Yeah. Couldn't, yeah. Couldn't hit him. He did. He wouldn't have had the, he wouldn't have the reach. Stamina, you'd he's got, he's be got, even. He's got but feet. He can kick him. He can. Uh, ah, I, I think listen, Bruce Lee was faster too. I got to go by that. You them. can be as fast as you want if you don't weigh enough. It's over. Well, what are you going to do once you waste away? Right. Stop so, fighting. So, so, so you're, you're saying uh, you're all for the thing. Yeah, well, just remember, David beat Goliath. And for the record, I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan, but you said in their prime, it's Tyson. There's a book like that, David versus Goliath. <laughs> you got you to catch that book if you can. I saw the Newmans had it as part of their Hanukkah yes, tradition. Yes, that was the first Hanukkah gift, isn't that? It was a, um, just... Uh, in, in awe of what that book has done so far. Anyway. And all the chat rooms are tending to uh, lean with Tyson. Wow. Because that's the answer. Wow. That's interesting. Only because you said in their prime. Well, Bruce Lee only had a prime. He died well, young, yeah, right? He's dead. But he if wouldn't you said, win now. Yeah, but if, yeah, if you said at now? The, at, near <laughs> the end of their Tyson. life. <laughs> I give it to Tyson. It's a bag of bones, right? <laughs> I give it to Tyson now. Uh, but okay. If... if uh, yeah. Tyson was a hard guy to beat, but you'd think hard guy to MMA beat. He was an impossible guy to beat in his prime. He couldn't be touched. But nobody beat Bruce Lee either. What, what's his name? The other karate guy that you say nobody beats him. He pushes the world out. Um, uh, well, Chuck, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Bruce Lee beat Chuck Norris. <laughs> in a and, movie. He be, and he can't be beat. <laughs> in a movie. In a movie. <laughs> Which is real. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd said Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris in their prime, I would say it's Bruce Lee. So you're going right down to the nub. We're smoking the Atabe Italos. Um, four and a half inch? Four. Four inch. Four inch cigar. You got an hour out of it. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. It's very good. 
Love it. Right the down burn, to the end. Listen, but you, you, I, don't, I, don't, I don't advertise when I'm touching up cigars. I'll usually take the lighter and take it under the stage and yeah. do a little touch-up. There's been no touch-up on it. The draw has been flawless. So, hey, look, look at the, the flavors look, there. It's the most perfect burning, great tasting. I'm very anti-Connecticut shade right now. This is not like other Connecticut shades. You're not getting the bitterness. It is sweetness. So you, There's nothing wrong with this. Barry ends up like the Lancero, but how, how would you compare this flavor-wise? There is more flavor on the bigger ring gauge out of base. That sweetness yeah. is more prevalent. That's the best Lancero on the market, hands down. This is the best cigar on the market, hands down. So I would say the Lancero would get like a 97. No. This would get a 98. Got 100, right? Got 100. Got 100 rating. Yeah. So over and so played. this is a 101. Ed Sullivan, who likes full body cigars, I see him going for an Atabay Every all the time, and, and I'm saying I'm shocked, but it's it, a great cigar. Yeah, yeah. So if 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 if, if you look at it, I wouldn't say it's a mild cigar either. No, it's five no. six. Yeah, absolutely good. That's where I was going to go. So that's my new way. I'm going to give you the number and then tell you. You end up being right, as opposed to if I said five six, you're going to say no. Oh, no, it's like a three or a four. <laughs> yeah. That's not so true. that's the that's my call. That's my way to go to it. I'll Ask write the first. numbers down from now on. How about that? Right. You write yours down. I'll write mine down, and we'll see where we come out. The real Mister. You two see that you're in love with each other. The real Mister. Jonathan just showed up on Facebook Live. Hello, Mister. Jonathan Carney. There we go. 2019 Cigar of the Year is. We're going to get that back immediately when we come back from break because we're going to break and when we come back we're not only going to tell you we're going to light up the 2019 cigar of the year and prove that we were right we're live in the studio 21 podcast cafe for the last time and you're listening to the cigar authority on the united podcast network Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning in aging room cigars. As Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for aging room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solara, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solara becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call... 
the three-peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the decade on steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at better cigar shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. Hello, this is Justo Aurora from Jerry Tobacco. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back with our number two, and it's official. We have a winner for the 2019 Cigar of the Year. Welcome back, everybody. And we're going to wait no longer because we're going to light it up and everything. The winner for the 2019 Cigar of the Year is? I guess I get the honors you of do. announcing it. It is the Nesta Miranda Special Selection, which is manufactured in Nicaragua by Miami Cigar and Company. The size is a 5.5 by 54, and it's a Nicaraguan Puro featuring a Habano wrapper, Criollo 98 binder, and fillers from Condega, Esteli, and Jalapa. A single cigar will set you back $7.69, while a box of 20 is $134.99, which is a savings of almost $19, or just over 12% off the box price on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, Try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. Do we have plenty of these? Because we're going to need them. We got a freight delivery of them last week. There we go. All right, so pass one of them out, Jonathan. They're, um, this is uh, a unbelievable cigar for $7. If you follow me on social media, you will see that I can't stop smoking these. So I did see that. I, I watched this. And we used to, uh, I think you worked for this company before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might be a little biased, me personally. Uh, this is the best thing they've ever had. 
It is. It is. Uh, you know, I started out with the coffee break, and then as I moved from the coffee break, I started smoking more and more of the Toros. Yeah. I haven't smoked the Gordo that much, the 60 ring gauge. Yeah. I'm just not a huge fan. Uh, but this is definitely the cigar of the year. Beautiful wrapper. Uh, well done. Beautiful. Tasting. Flavorful. Uh, I just can't say enough about what we have here for a $7 cigar. This was what factory? It's made it to my father factory. My father in Nicaragua. Uh, so uh, an, another uh, one for him. Actually, um, they have now two cigars that made the cigar of the year. That factory. Yeah. Cabaguan and uh, yeah. this one. Yeah. So uh, let's give it a cut and light because uh, I have not had as many as you have, but <laughs> I've had many. But it's time to cut the cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other brands were raising prices. Perdomo cut out the federal S chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. And the cold draw on this cigar has, a, for me, a definitive plum sweetness. Plum. Berry that's his maiden name. And a beautiful uh, draw, you know, a pre-light taste draw. You can see the chambers are opened up. I got plenty of easy draw that happens there. Also detecting a, a, a hint of wintergreen. Yeah, no, not at all. Not at all. You're all wrong. Doesn't make you a bad guy. Your, your, your palate's like way off because you're not eating enough. Yeah. When's the last time you ate? Uh, Tuesday. 22 <laughs> hours ago. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Sputnik. The Vertigo Sputnik <coughs> features a flip top, three jets, easy adjustment wheel, and the patented Vertigo big ass tank, all for the low price of $9.99. It may not be cigar of the year, but it could be lighter of the year. Ah, can we start that? Accessory of the year? Because we did start the cigar of the year, by the way. Right. 1992. Mm. Nobody was doing it. Now all the kids are doing it. I like it. I like that everybody does it. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things, uh, you know, when I get copied, sometimes it pisses me off. But it's good because I want to hear everybody's opinion because this is our opinion. But we put a lot into it. It has to do with sales. It has to do with how people vote. It has to, to do with how people vote not knowing they're voting, and that's by buying a single. Later on, they come in and buy a box of it. They've just made a major vote at that point. It's, it's the biggest vote that can happen. Somebody questioned me on, uh, you know, you haven't done a cigar of the year that you, never, that you didn't carry the brand. Well, why would we think it's the greatest cigar and not carry it? That'd be if crazy. we think it, so obviously everything we carry we think is great uh, for the price, for the um, strength profile, for that. So it doesn't make any sense to say that. But um, this is the Nesta Miranda special selection. Nesta Miranda is a person. We had him on the show recently. Uh, but maybe you didn't catch that show. Uh, certainly go back. We are bringing Nesta back because we, he's going to discuss, um, really go deep into what happened to his company, which is an unbelievable story to tell you. But tell us a little, Barry, about uh, the story of the company, the man, the brand. Well, the company was started in 1989 by Nestor and Mariana Moran Miranda, who began selling cigars out of the trunk in the car. The car. The family would hire Daniel Miranda, their son, as one of their first employees in 1994, who unfortunately succumbed to an aneurysm in 2008. He was a karate guy himself, by the way. In the summer of 94, Tatiana Miranda would join the family-owned business while attending the University of Florida. And in 1998, the company released his Tatiana Cigars, where it quickly skyrocketed to the number one flavored premium cigar. In 1995, Nestor would leave Southern Wine and Spirits to focus fully on Miami Cigar. In 2006, the company released the Nesta Miranda Special Selection as an Oscuro and a Rosado, and they added the Connecticut, but all three disappeared in 2014. In 2009, Jason Wood, the husband of Tatiana, would join the company as Vice President of Sales and Marketing, and in the spring of 2019, the Nesta Miranda Special Selection made its triumphant return with the blend tweaked and modified today's cigar smoker. Today, the company owns brands such as Tatiana, Don Lino, Nesta Miranda, and they also handle sales and distribution nationwide for Toscano and La Aurora. 
Miami Cigar and Company prides itself on being family-owned, and they embody their slogan of, it's not just cigars, it's a lifestyle. I was surprised to hear that he stayed with Southern Wine and Spirits all those years. Mm -hmm. While that brand was taken off, the cigar boom was going mm -hmm. on, and he stayed all that time doing two jobs. Two like jobs. That. Yeah. Hardest working. Yeah. One of the... Uh, it's unfair to the only manufacturers yeah. to say he's the hardest, but he's one of the hardest. It was amazing working. to me that he did that. So I, I, there's a lot to learn about Nesta Miranda. Here's a cigar that he put his name attached to. Special selection. I would say it is a special selection for sure. It certainly is. Uh, good job, uh, Pepin Garcia and uh, Nesta Miranda. You got uh, a winner here. Um, never mind this of, of the price. For a value cigar in a $7 price range, this is uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable deal. It was a box of what? Box is 20. 20. Box so 20. easy, easy, uh, mm -hmm. easy buy. Buy them by the box. I like that they kept the, the look of the original packaging from back in uh, 2006. Yeah. You got the burlap on the side of the box. You got the razor blade logo. Yeah. He was explaining that he, he didn't like the, um, when the box was finished, he didn't like it. Then he put a piece of burlap on. He mm -hmm. says, hey, add this burlap mm -hmm. to it and change the whole look to it. And it's unique. Yeah, when, right. when I used to work there, they used to tease the hell out of him about the burlap. Yeah. It was like a love-hate relationship with the burlap. Well, you're going to know the, the box of cigars when you see it with that sure. burlap strip that's on there. So, she's uh, great cigar. Um, you know, you, you'll see as you're smoking it um, that the uh, burn is perfect all the way through. It's just a well-done, all-around cigar. I think we got it right, taking nothing away from all the contenders that were there. Uh, it was a great year. Uh, four contenders, everything that was on there, everything got votes, everything got its argument of what it is. But um, at the end of it, it was Nesta Miranda Special Selection that got it. This is the Toro. Um, I think the best size of the, of the, uh, of the blend, too, that it, um, best flavor notes and things that come out of this. So uh, that's that. You think we got it right? Nailed it. I agree. Yeah. Since, uh, there wasn't a, since May, if this was my pick. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's right in my wheelhouse in terms of strength and flavor and what have you. Yeah, there's no, there's no emotion, for me anyways, there's no emotional connection. I had my favorites in the pack, and this is probably number two of the ones in there as far as what I smoke on the regular. Uh, but when you look at the data, the data just doesn't lie. Yeah. So, you know, I want to be able to look at this like we did, and, and, and years from now, we're going through the line, and you look at it, and I feel good about um, the cigars of the years of all these since 1992, and look, and as we remember them as they were in those days. Now, everything changes, like, like Ed was saying. These companies get sold off to somebody else. Somebody uh, pushes it to the side and doesn't make the brand any longer or maybe holds it back till after FDA or whatever's going on. Um, some of these things disappear. Some of them were better cigars in those days than they were today. Um, but, you know, I, I feel very good about each and every year that we ended up picking mm -hmm. it for what it was uh, in that day. And um, we're going to remember the cigar mm -hmm. as it was and we'll see as it carries on. And uh, um, Nestor is certainly uh, somebody that people in the know in this industry know who he is and and uh, what he's accomplished over the years. So it's a fitting uh, monument to him anyway. So congratulations. We have your trophy here. Barry is going to take it with him carefully today because it is made of glass. Yeah, give it to Mr. Butterfingers. No problem. <laughs> yeah. uh, pack it up and ship it to Miami. Um, we hopefully uh, you enjoy it and um, a little thank you from us uh, for making such a great cigar right now it's time for the Don Raphael offer of the day brought to you by Don Raphael cigars everyone has a price would you do this and if so for how much a million dollars well a million dollars and these million dollars is hypothetical because I can't give you a million dollars but uh, you could pay in cigars I'm okay yeah? with that. Yeah. And, and I could probably get through that with you. Um, <laughs> eat a large cockroach every day for the rest of your life. How large are we talking? Like the size of the Sputnik lighter here? Yeah. I've seen bigger ones than that. Well, Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan's not going to eat. That's crazy. No, thought. I mean, I could eat it during my eating window. What Every if, day, you know it's going to be a vitamin. Every you, morning, you get up. and You it's could up. never do a 48-hour fast, then. That would be out for you. 
Yeah. That's true. A lot of protein. Yeah, you're off the fasting. Million dollars. It's only a million dollars. Only a million dollars. What does this world come to? How I'm much, overpaying you. How much different would it taste on a scorpion? I mean, we eat a scorpion. Every day. Yeah, every day. It's like just the inside is going to be like just a Yucky. mouthful of boogers. <laughs> Not even your own. It's someone else's. <laughs> oh, God. I'm out. You're out. I'm out. Because it requires eating. He doesn't want yeah. to eat. And it's the 24-hour non-eating thing. 48-hour fast. It's all over with. If there's one insect that disgusts me, it's the cockroach. So I'm out. Out for a million dollars. Ed? No, thank you. <laughs> I think I'd do it. Hmm? Get the... No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't eat avocado. For a million dollars, <laughs> I would. But you wouldn't eat it for your own health. It's good for you. There's nothing wrong with a cockroach, right? You can't get sick from it or anything like that. I don't know, other than the disease they carry. Disease, yeah. You didn't yeah. say it had to be raw, so you could probably cook it or cover it in chocolate. If there was ever a nuclear holocaust, the roach would survive. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. And, and Keith Richards. And Keith Richards, yeah. All right, so we talked about all the things that happened this year in cigars, but what happened this week, Barry? Let's find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein. It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled N2 bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And as usual, the end of the year is a quiet week, and we already touched on this, but big news came down from NATO that informed retailers across the country that the FDA has begun enforcing the Tobacco 21 law, and uh, we're going to get to that in depth in the after show. The after show, we're going to talk about it. I'm disgusted by it, and I got a major problem with it, and I want to explain that to you. That'll be the after show on Wednesday, which is New Year's Day. Uh, you can catch that on audio only. And we were quiet, so any of you that are hungover from New Year's Eve, you'll still be able to listen. Have a little hair of the dog, listen to the show. What is that? It's when you have a drink in the morning to offset the uh, being hangover, hungover. Yeah, you wouldn't know. That's your non-eating window. Yeah, just drink some water. Nah, you drunk in the morning, you just have another drink. I don't. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm oh. a professional. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for news. That's it for news. All that's right. What's up in the cigar? Oh, and the most important 2019 cigar of the year is yeah. the Miranda Special Selection. There we go. And a lot of things happen at the end of the year. Maybe we don't know yet, but a lot of things happen, like mergers and acquisitions that have to, have to happen at the at the very by the end of the year, and then some things are taken over at that point. We'll find out that maybe next week, the week after, as we do. But next week, we're going to talk about what cigars are selling well and why. And I'm going to pull the curtain back, basically, and and look through the register, look at look at our reports, and tell you what sizes, what uh, brands, what different things are selling, our top sellers and things like that, uh, and we'll see if it means anything. We do this in our in our sales uh, managers meeting and the, with the staff, looking at some of the history of what happened in the past year of cigars and sold. Sometimes let us know the future, right? So uh, we'll get into that uh, next week, um, and on January 11th, we'll get into the state of the cigar industry, of what state that we're in there, and Fast forward ahead to January 18th, what happened during the meatball? The meatball is happening on the week of the 18th. We'll have the answer of who ends up winning that. Um, and perfect timing, we're bringing in Michael Capellini from Toscano Cigars. He'll be on the show, and um, he knows a meatball or right. two. But he's not making a meatball. He's not making a meatball. He's not appearing at the meatball at Steve Saka this year. Mm -hmm. But if he gets dethroned, maybe we bring in a, a, a professional right. um, from Italy uh, <laughs> to that. And um, Isn't a uh, meatball something that was <coughs> an American thing? The Italians made it here in the U.S. It's not something that came over from Italy? I don't know that answer. I I'm believe gonna, that I'm that's the case. I'm going to have to look into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you think I the meatball the is an American food? Yeah, it's an American food, Americanized poor, Italian poor food. Poor people. Yeah, Ed Sullivan's anti-meatball. Yeah, he is. 
Um, and then uh, January 25th, I'm going to be getting ready for TBE. That's the Tobacco Plus Expo that's going to be happening in Las Vegas. I haven't been there in many, many years to see it, but I hear it is uh, booming, um, and it's going to be very premium cigar heavy hmm. um, with all the changes that are happening in the industry and, and the other trade show organizations. TPE looks like uh, um, it's the bell of the ball right now. We'll see. I'll be getting ready for that. And um, the following week, which is Super Bowl Saturday, I will not be on the show. It's going to be Barry, Mr. Jonathan, and Ed taking the reins, um, and it's Mr. Jonathan's birthday. So I'll the be, day before, but yeah. yeah, I'll be missing your birthday. Please promise you're not going to spend a half hour reading something. Nope, no promises. No promises. Can you stay fully clothed at least? Again, I make no promises. And the history of the meatball it began uh, somewhere around 1880 with Italian immigrants coming to America. Coming to America. Yeah. And I hear there's going to be a new Coming to America movie out, <laughs> by the way. Eddie Murphy's on fire right now. Yeah. It's got a lot of things going on, so... Uh. The following message was submitted through the Contact <laughs> Us page of thecigarauthority.com. <clears throat> and Carl from Texas writes, Hi, Mr. Jonathan. Great to see you again. He paid us a visit this week and spent some time together over Christmas. You always manage to find time to shoot the breeze and with me about smokes or cooking, both of which we have in common. Uh, sorry to run out on you. You must have been in the studio and nighttime was approaching quickly as my prescription sunglasses were all I had. Uh, I'll place an order online, and thanks again for the Byron suggestion. I listen to all the podcasts. See you on my next trip back, Carl from Crum, Texas. That sounds like a personal letter written to you. It's not <laughs> yeah. a letter in the mailbag. Through the contact us yeah, page. What the hell am I supposed to do? I don't know. He you, saves the ones that kisses his rear end, and he tosses the not others. true. I read all the ones that are talking shit first. They just stop doing it. But that's not a, they a, realize that's that not a letter to the show. No. It's a personal letter. Yeah. It's very weak. You got a better one than that? Come on. <laughs> You're ending the year here. You know, by the way, that today's classic three-way, the champion of the world here, right? Oh, I hope you studied. Yeah, of course Jonathan studied. Yeah. I just, just saying it, but go ahead. Like all the other times, I did not realize this was the last one. I did not study, and I will be victorious. All right. Uh, Jason writes... Uh, Mr. J, I'm right in line with your libertarian views. Less ah. government regulation and intervention would improve this country's self-sufficiency. Barry, you nailed it. Yes. Within the population, neither the elephants nor the donkeys have done have ever done much to further, other than further polarize the country. Stand strong on the panel and keep articulating the libertarian common sense. Oh God. Thus, coming from a law-abiding, legal, concealed bearing, black cigar-smoking citizen. In America, regards Jason. Okay, so this is you threw away every other mailbag, right? You no, start, I, I they, starting off. New. They come in and I read them in reverse order. It's how I've always done it. It's how I do it. That's my process. So you just contradicted yourself because you said that you read the bad ones first, but now you're saying that you're if going it's a bad in one, order. if it's a bad one, I put it at the top of the pile. <laughs> so send your bad emails. <laughs> to the cigarauthority.com you go on in there it says contact us hit that send us your thing somebody sent us a, a vocal one once we played yeah, it right yeah, yeah. you can actually do it vocally if you'd like to um either way uh, early thoughts here on the cigar of the year the nesta miranda special selection peach barbecue peach yeah, peach no. barbecue sauce never had a little bit before. of spice a little bit of the sweetness from the peach is there such a thing or you made it up no, it's a thing. Of course it's yeah. a thing. Yeah, peach barbecue sauce? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never had it. See, I'm getting a little bit of brown sugar, some notes of coffee. Uh, on the retrohale, after you get past the pepper, there's a little bit of dark chocolate. Very complex cigar. Basically the same exact Re flavor notes that I just retro gave. Retrohale it. Retrohale it. No. Retrohale it. Last no. one of the year. Last one for the year. <laughs> Your boss is giving you a command. Nothing came out. <laughs> Nothing came out. Zero. You got twi twice here, too. A little. Yeah. That was a little. A little sting? You take too much smoke. That's why you get got, got a little sting to it. You figured that you wouldn't have a gag reflex at this point in your life. Now we, I mean, I could put the whole cigar in. <laughs> we had Atabay at five to six in strength profile. This is pretty close. Man. Eight. At seven or eight is what I was seven thinking. Seven or eight? Six at most. Seven or eight. It's good. It's not overwhelming, but it's got a lot, a lot of flavor. It's high on the flavor, 
but a little lower on the strength. I'm going to go with a seven. Anybody can smoke this. Don't oh, yeah. be scared of the cigar. Yeah. It looks darker. It looks like it's stronger than it is. It's a lot of flavor. It's a great cigar. We're going to go to break. When we come back, it may not, it may or may not be the end of the decade, but we got to pick a cigar of the decade anyway, based on the last 10 years of what we had. We'll see if we can come up with something. Does it we'll, have to be not limited? I mean, do, can we change the rules on this? Do whatever you want. All right. Do whatever you want. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, so there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican Cigar Manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Anduyo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose 
Dominguez. Jose. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. Hi, this is Nestor Miranda from Miami Cigar, and you are listening to the Cigar Authority. And a big congratulations to Nestor Miranda, the Nestor Miranda Special Selection, the 2019 Cigar of the Year, and deservingly so. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. So uh, we all know the Cigar of the Year, um, but what should the Cigar of the Decade be? So I don't know if it matters to you what the past Cigars of the Year uh, were, um, no, that, I'm, uh, I'll say it anyway, it's Nesta Miranda, which would, which would count, it would be Aganosa Leaf, Connecticut, it would be Aladino Robusto, La Galera, Connecticut. Oh, it has to be out of that list? Recluse, Amadeus, no it doesn't, B.G. Meyer, Trademark, uh, Atabay, Ortsak, or 22 degrees north, 83 degrees west. Now, if it was based on sales in that list... I think it's trademark. If that, if you could only go by that list, I think trademark has it. It doesn't just go. You're it, talking by volume. By yeah. volume. But if you, as we know, that is part of it. But that's not everything. I'm glad it doesn't have to be part of that list. It would be voting. It would be um, people coming in buying it for the first time, buying multiple after they end up buying it the first time. It's everything that we say. Cigar of the year is now. It's cigar of the decade. Okay. And and I'm not going to hold you to this. I'm going to hold me to that because I believe those were the best cigars of the year. I'm going to stand by it, but that's me. Based on the criteria that we came up with to make those cigars of the year. But were you here cigar for, of the decade. Were, were you here for all those now? All of them. 2010. Yeah. Going back to 2010. That's when we started the show. Okay. Hmm. What, yeah. was, what was 2010? 2283. Yeah, I was here. Jesus Fuego. Yeah. Yeah, we had him on. Lost the episode. You can't hear that one. <laughs> so, obviously, Aladino Corojo Reserve needs to be on the list, at least in contention for Cigar of the Decade. It's one of the best your cigars favorite. ever. It's your favorite. Uh, one that I think we would have a hard time. But because, it's not readily available. But it's available enough. For you. Because you buy them by the box and you make I sure. I have you seven boxes in reserve right now at home in case they start making them. You are into that cigar. I'm into it. See, would it be the same criteria, limited editions? I think you were just discussing that. So for me, I'd have to go by the list. Probably be out of bay. It would be out of bay for me. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best cigar to come out in over 10 years. I mean, I would love to have a pack of these where I can smoke them side by side. Yeah. Or one after the other and vote on it. Is everything in the last 10 still available? Um... No, B.G. Meyer's not. B.G. No. Meyer's not. Wartsack is not. <laughs> Which I wouldn't put either of those up against the others um, as a, a few of the ones on the top here. But I'll tell you, the ones that are available sell like crazy, every single one of them. I got to say, it's out of base, the... the, the of the last decade, the best thing to come out in the past decade for me, or maybe in my 35 years hmm. in the cigar business, the best thing that that came out was Atabay, to me personally. Uh, as far as how does it sell after somebody buys a cigar, all we got to do, and you know better than, that, than any of us, 
get the guy to buy the cigar once, try the cigar. After that, it's it, all set. It becomes and the people walk rotation. in and walk right over to it because, yeah. oh, my God, once you had it, I don't care who you are, but if you're into full-body cigars, Ed Sullivan, you end up going to Atabay. I smoke them. And it's a tough one to try for the first time. And listen, we just gave it to 1,000 people uh, in the care package. Well, so once well you, if, you've tried if it, you're going to use that as criteria, then then now you've got to look at the... And there wasn't Ritos at the time. If you smoke an Atabay Ritos, you're, you're even another, another then lead it's from the be, Then it's got to be Byron Grand Poema because of the 200 boxes that he makes of every size. That one sells out first but there's only every time. Yeah. There's only 200 of all of them. Not, not of Ritos, not of... 200 the, boxes a year of all of them. I don't know about that. This triggered a thought, though. When you talk about best-selling in the store, are you going on a per-unit basis well, or and, a dollar? And we're, gonna, and we're gonna get to that next week when we go through the numbers of what it is because they're very different when it comes to right. units and dollars. Correct. So you, you'll if get- If it's units, we're gonna be talking about pencils. We're gonna be talking about uh, six by 60. Firecrackers, the, right, um, you know, right. Dos Ombre, right. things that sell half a million units. Right. But if you're talking a thirty dollar against a ten dollar cigar. Yeah. It's three times it'll need to sell <laughs> right. three times as much to do it. So two different ways to do it. But um you you smoke you know could I look at that you smoke um Roma Craft all the time and that's the cigar of the decade for you because you smoke it all the time or, or well, this year it was certainly your leader, I would imagine. It was the leader this year, but then again, you know, there's. it doesn't mean that I think it's the best cigar, right? I'm just not going to spend 30 bucks well, for it becomes, every yeah, cigar it becomes, I For me, it becomes, is, is Atabay a great cigar? Of course. Did I thoroughly enjoy the one we just smoked at Idolos? Yes. But dollar for dollar, when I'm spending my money and we have to buy cigars now, what am I buying? But but why is it dollar for dollar when you're saying what's the best and then you talk about right. dollars? I'd say money is no object. Money is an object. It's always an object. See, I, I see what he's saying. If you look at like a thirty dollar Atabay, is the seven sixty nine uh, is the Atabay four times better? No, is that's it, is it? Better? Yes, it is. It is four times better. Yeah. That's not my point. My point is. Okay, I've got a finite amount of money that I can afford to spend on cigars. So I would rather smoke six Aladino Corojo Reserves than two of the Byron Grand Poema. Right. But because I'm going to smoke the six cigars. Now, now we're establishing value as the criteria. Mm-hmm. What, yeah, I don't, I don't just, like that. What's so, the best? Yeah. So I'm telling you that Nesta Miranda Special Selection was the best cigar of the year. And happens to be a great value on top of that. That was not a determination to us. No. It may be a determination of people that came in and bought boxes of the cigars, so they sold by the box after somebody tried a cigar or two. That determined that. Did it happen to Atabay that somebody came in and bought an Atabay and started buying boxes of Atabay? Maybe not. Several times, yeah. It's happened, but yeah. I mean, not to the degree of Aladino. Right. For instance, they bought lots no, of them. No, Atabay becomes the, the, that extra thing, that little extra something special that somebody adds on to their bill. Yeah. They'll go up and they'll get one and they'll get their box of their regular stuff. Which, by the way, we saw a lot of after Christmas of people coming in did not they were, get. They were not disappointed. Get what, yes, they did not get what they wanted for Christmas. <laughs> and then they came in and bought some Atabays and Byrons after the fact. Yeah. Very interesting. So they, and they, I think you see a lot with the gift certificates too, right? People look at that as found money, right? So they'll usually buy something more expensive than they normally smoke. Yeah, Trevor actually said that to me. There was a lot of that going on yesterday. Uh, people came in with the gift certificates and ended up. Uh, we had an unbelievable Atabay and Byron day yesterday. Yep. Um, so they made a got a small gift certificate right. and said. Put this towards they, something. They won't buy it for themselves, but it's a great gift if someone else is yeah, paying. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's time to take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. 
Asylum cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars, with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum cigars. <laughs> in England, the police are on the lookout for two robbers who stole a million dollars in sex toys from a truck while the driver was sleeping. How do you find these things? Police officers are interviewing area residents to see if they saw anyone coming or going with the assortment of sex toys slated for or delivery. Would have been to, better if you said going or coming. but <laughs> yeah. Slated for uh, Rocks Off Limited. The driver wasn't considered a suspect, but the hardened criminals are likely to face a <laughs> stiff sentence after buzzing off with the huge load. Oh my and God. that's not only insane, it's asylum. All right. You, you rallied. It <laughs> you rallied. And if you follow me on Facebook, you saw my daughter gave me a Christmas gift that said P.S. to not sex toys. Yeah. She knew the asylum. So she went with it that they weren't the stolen sex toys. <laughs> wow. You like the asylum bit. I love the asylum yeah. bit. Even if none of you laugh, I'm dying inside. It's, no, it's good stuff. It's funny. Uh, it, it's, you know, time to bring back the old Fat Freddy type of thing. <laughs> but it, th that was a good second second hit on it anyway. following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com, and the subject line is Cigar of the Decade. Ah! Hi, everyone. During one of your podcasts, you mentioned a Cigar of the Decade. I think it's a great idea to put a package together Cigar of the Year for the past 10 years, including this year plus a wild card. The wild card is a cigar that came out too late this year to make the Contenders Pack. A cigar agreed by the members of the Cigar Authority, so it's 11 sticks. Just give us time to smoke all 11. It's cold outside. Keep up the great work. Thanks for everything you do for the industry. And Merry Christmas. Signed, Tony from Jersey. I would like to address Tony on this. If it came out too late for the Contenders this year, it's a... it's potential for 2020 right which would make it, it the next decade right we gotta save that yeah. but um yeah it's and, not and, 10 and anyway because we can't get two of them right yeah. um one of which we may make in 2020 but that would be a whole different yeah. cigar uh same name but that would be it um i talked about it with you and Ed before, and you were talking me into this wasn't the end of the decade. I feel like I lost no, an opportunity. No, we were, we were in agreement that this cigar that we're smoking right now, the Nesta Miranda Special Selection, is the end of the decade. When we originally discussed it, we discussed doing it, but there was no way we could have included the 2019 winner because it wasn't announced yet. Yeah. We didn't know what it would be. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, this might not be a bad... Is, March type, or, or even release it event. Release a Super Bowl weekend, and then you have till March fifteenth to vote. Give people a whole six weeks to get it done. You're talking an expensive pack, but we could do it. Most people smoke two cigars a week. We wish it was more, but six weeks will give them enough time to vote. Especially if somebody's stuck in their house because of a blizzard and they have to put it off for a little bit. All right. I'm going to uh, give me that. <laughs> give me that. <laughs> give me that one. And uh, that possibly could happen. We'll, uh, we'll Here we go, go to, Tony. Tony, we'll go to work on that. Um, okay. Let's get to it so that we can have a champion for 2019. It's time Champion for of the decade. Of the decade. Of the, of the year in the decade, this classic day in classic history brought to you by Classic Cigars. It's time for this day in classic history, brought to you by Classic Cigars. Classic Cigars are now the most affordable cigar brand in America. With prices as low as $1.50, this cigar has something for everyone. The Classic Connecticut is light and smooth. The Classic Maduro is bold, but never overpowering. The Classic Cameroon sits somewhere in between with hints of sweetness. And the Classic Cuban is a real knockoff of the taste and flavors from old-time Havanas. Classic cigars are sold in cost-saving bundles of 20 and sold in five great sizes, ranging from $1.50 to $2.25 per cigar, which makes Classic the most affordable, premium, handmade cigar in America. Classic Cigars. Okay, this is it. No cheating. So don't be looking at anything. If you did your homework already, you did your homework. If you didn't and forgot about it, it's happened. Who's our champion? Uh, I think I was. I think yeah. it's Barrett's. Yeah, we'll I give it to so. him. All right. This is for all the marbles. I have three questions and one tiebreaker if needed. 
T- today, December 28th, Stan Lee, American comic book artist, writer, and creative leader for Marvel Multimedia Corporations, doing the Avengers, Spider-Man, The Incredible Hulk, was born in New York City, New York. He died in 2018, but he was born today. What year? Stan Lee. Uh, 1942. 42. 1929. 29. I have 1929 written down. Old have 29. Everybody is over. Everybody is over. It's 1922. No points for anyone. And I changed my answer from 1919. I should have uh, just kept it. You shouldn't Whatever. have copied me. I didn't think he was 96 when he died. Okay. Uh, over to Ed Sullivan. Denzel Washington, American actor. He was Malcolm X. He was born in Mount Vernon, New York. Today, what year? Denzel Washington. Write it down, guys. Write it down. 1964. 64. 1949. 49. 67. 67. Mr. Jonathan gets the point. 54. 54. Oh, he he says good. 49. Uh, that's a point for Mr. Jonathan, who has one point. Nothing for Barry. Nothing for Ed Sullivan. Two points if you get it exact. And this is the last question, unless we got to go to a tiebreaker. Mr. Jonathan, over to you. John Legend, R&B singer, pianist, who scored his first big hit in the 2005 single Ordinary People. He had collaborated with acclaimed artists such as Jay-Z and Kanye West. John Legend, born today. What year? I'm waiting for Barron's to have I'm his answer locked down. in. And Sullivan, you're locked in. I'm locked. 1962. 62. 75. 75. I had 1979. 79 is one over at Sullivan, and Barry Stein will take it at 75. At 78, we got a wow. tie. He and I are the same age. And he I did much better. That. And he did much better than you. Did he? Yes, he is did. Is he a co-host on a podcast? Because I am. Yeah. <laughs> How many Grammys have you won? How many? I have I have two Grammys. Yeah. They're both passed. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. That was quick. Okay. Um, all right. It's over to Barry, who is tied. Um, and it's possible for Ed Sullivan to jump in and win this, and we get a three-way tie, and then it'll well, go on to next Theoretically, week. I shouldn't be allowed to participate in the tie But the, you're at, I'm, I'm running the show right. here, so you're in. <laughs> you're of in. Of course. <laughs> so it's over to Barry. Seth Myers, comedian who once hosted Weekend Update and Saturday Night Live, where they served the show's head writer from 2006 to 2014. In 2014, he began hosting his own late night program on NBC. He was born today. Seth Meyer, today. 1977. 77. 1960. 60. 1970. 1970 for the point and win. Mr. Jonathan at 73. He's the champion again, son of a bitch. Champion of the decade. He wins I, every year on the last show. You bastard. Uh, Tommy Minota sent us a Christmas card. And he didn't cheat because he got none exact. He said, uh, thank you for making my Saturdays and Wednesdays something to look forward to. Merry Christmas to you all. Signed Tommy Minota. I just wanted to Very nice. give him the uh, shout out. Thank you, Tommy. Hey. Jonathan? Yes, sir. Have I, you ever put butter on a pop tart? For you. So you can uh, refer to me as champ from now on, on since I am the champion of the decade on oh. a segment that I hate. All right, champ. And that I wish would go away, and I never liked it. Yeah, whatever. You can't take me down, Ed Sullivan. <laughs> I'm happy now. <laughs> Are you going to have a, a snack to celebrate? I might. I mean, I'm due. <laughs> or maybe I won't. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I won't eat it all today. Yeah, that'll be good. Keep that up. Yeah, I can do it. So, any New Year's resolutions? This is this is when uh, your I'm grievances, not... your your problems. Your Are we going to air grievances? Yeah, grievances. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not big on specifically New Year's resolutions, but I do have a resolution that I'm going to make it for the whole year that I keep my weight once I get below the 190. He's that obsessed. I'm going to keep it there. He's obsessed, folks. Because I'm not, I can't do the, I don't want to do the up and down thing that I've been doing. I got all the way up to 205 during my vacation. It's all the way up to 205. Mm-hmm. 
We're, we're talking about a 10, 15 pound swing in your life. It's too much. It's you're, unhealthy. You're obsessed with this. It's unhealthy. This is what's unhealthy. This is what's no, unhealthy. No, this is healthy. You're obsessed. I listen, to, I listen to my girl, Katie Boyd. She's all about the fasting. She's all about keeping yourself in control. And that's what I've been lacking. So I'm, I'm bringing it all in now. So in other words, you're a bitch. He's ambitious. I am. You're being in con- being total, in total control. control of himself. Correct. Yeah, you're a bitch. Barry, what are you going to do? Uh, continue to diet. You're going to keep it out. Yeah, Good for you. Do a 48-hour fast once with I, me. Once I hit 100 down, I'm joining the gym. Oh. I wanted to take some weight off of my knees before I did that. So... Um, another 48. So life uh, change for you. Yep, I'll you, join you, the gym. you feel good, better than you did before, I, I right? I feel great. You know, I didn't want to bring it up because you'll start coughing, but you didn't <laughs> cough today. So take note of this. November, December has been a lot worse. Come April, May, once allergy season kicks uh-huh. in, I'm curious to see how much worse it gets. It's nothing today. No. Did, did I, I even hear thro- it once? Cleared my throat once. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to keep trying to stay. I'm not going to go as hardcore as I have been. Uh, Enjoy a little teeny bit anyway, but I'm going to keep going. If I could do another 40, I I did 40 in six months. If I can do 40 in a year, I'll be thrilled. Um, Are you going to stay with the keto or are you going to go into more of a a lifestyle change? He's got a doctor's appointment coming up. I got a doctor's appointment coming up on the 30th. We're going to see what he has to say. Uh, Something that... My my whole family, when we all get together, it's always scotch and cigars and, and too much eating. And something that I've done is I've cut out alcohol completely, and I thought I would miss it more. But See, now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to try to start drinking. You're going to try to start drinking. <laughs> I, I, I had an um, Irish whiskey on Christmas Day. Was it Irish coffee or just the no, whiskey? No, just the whiskey, an Irish really? whiskey. Didn't like it. No. See, I feel bad. Uh, a cigar company sent you a box of Florida Con- a box with a bottle of Florida Conyu twelve in it. Where is it? It's in Nashua. I forgot. <laughs> Very to, I forgot to bring it to you. I was going to try to weasel it once I brought it here. And who was it? Uh, Placencia. Ah. Uh, but Florida Conyu pairs perfectly with the Nesta Miranda special ah. selection on my back deck all throughout the summer. That was the pairing. It's a now the great doctor pairing. did tell me to stay away from from rums. Because they're all sugar, but you continue to have rum. I continue to do rum. I'm doing a calorie diet, so it's a little bit different for me. Yeah, but if you switch to whiskey instead of yeah, and rum. if you have white rum with a diet coke, there's no carbs. The darker rum is sweeter. It has the carbs and what have you. Yeah, you gonna do anything different? I'm gonna try to smoke a few more cigars. Yeah, it's impossible. Is oh, I could cut back on sleep. Yeah, he could. I mean, just cut an hour off. And do you have a do you have a skip a day? Uh, occasionally, if I'm on vacation or something, we traveling. Some, yeah, yeah, right. the traveling thing messes you up. It does. Yeah, I won't travel in 2020 then. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. No, yeah. I have to. Never mind. I have a lot of traveling to do. A lot of traveling. Next week, uh, I'm going to the Perdomo National Sales Meeting. I'm being a guest speaker at their mm. national sales meeting, which would be interesting. I'm going to give a perspective on the as the retailer, because that's what I am. You're going to bring some books, pass them out? Uh, I believe uh, they've been purchased already by Mr. Perdomo for Nick is wow. the man. That's what I heard. He's the man. So uh, I don't have to... Sell it, I guess. <laughs> He's at, at, at the. Uh... If anybody ever wanted to look up to somebody, I believe Nick Perdomo is the guy because he always does the right thing. Yes, he doesn't uh, have to. He, he didn't listen, have to buy him. You would have given him to him. Of course, he did the right thing. He's and a made great the friend. He's a great friend. He's a good person. And uh, you know, when I was asked to do this, of course, I'm like, of, of course I will. Um, honored to be asked to do it, and I hope I do a good job. I'm prepared, and I'm going down swinging. And if you're one of the um, listening, and you're one of the um, salesmen there, I'm coming after. I'm coming at you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> after you. Yeah, uh, but it's going to be on my on my thought of what a rep is supposed to represent. Not only represent the company, but I can I consider them as working for me. Um, when they come in, they should provide value to 
uh, me as opposed to me looking out and say, oh, my God, here's the salesman coming in. And he's, you know, I, I, that's a salesman coming in as opposed to a representative coming yeah. in. It's a different person. Uh, so I'm going to give my perspective on what, it, and it's changed over the years. Back in the day, before the cigar boom, a salesman or, or a cigar rep was different than they are now. They have to get back to what they were, provide value. Dress up a little bit. Yeah. Clean up the case, maybe yeah. fill some singles. Some things like that. So uh, I hope I provide value and not just spew my garbage that I'm going to spew, but they end up learning something from it, listening, because I'm going to tell them what retailers are thinking you're not going to pull any so, punches yeah you're going to hear it and um you know do with what, what what you will at that point so uh thoughts of the cigar of the year the nesta miranda special selection this is the toro it is five and a half inches by 54 i like the size uh 54 is about the max i want to be mm -hmm. at anyway but it's it's girthy there's a lot of flavor to it it feels good in my hand i feel like i'm really smoking something there's a lot of um good smoke production long the finish burn line yeah, is you know phenomenal. i still taste it yeah a little bit of a coffee finish espresso maybe bordering on turkish Not, coffee well i asked for another coffee mm -hmm. because i said this is going to go perfect with a coffee which it mm -hmm. does very nice and one of them is called a coffee break right yes the four and a half by 50 yeah I like this one a little nicer. So what do you think all around? What do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, it's it certainly, in looking at the data, it certainly deserves to be number one. And I had it as my second favorite in the pack anyway. So I, got, I have no complaints. People are asking what came in second place. It was a tie. Six-way six tie. tie for second. Uh, Everybody so else was the first loser. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Everything was great. And uh, yeah. one beat it out. And that's it. And I, I, I think we got it right. And uh, we'll uh, send you your emails to us. Tell us what we got wrong or whatever you end up saying. Uh, give us some feedback so we can make the show better in 2020. That's our plan to do. And uh, that's it. Uh, next week, it is a new year and a new show open and a new studio sponsor. So uh, I'll be back from the Perdomo National Sales Meeting and tell you what I can and maybe some of the stuff I can't. You never know. I forget sometimes. So until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And if you've learned nothing else in the last two hours other than I am the champion of the decade, <laughs> always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.